Okay, folks, welcome to Coffee and Revelation on a windy but gloriously sunny day here in Sydney. And <laughs> we continue our leisurely place through Revelation chapter 21. <clears throat> Those who are... We're at verse 7. We, we saw on... Uh, Friday. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. And in this verse, those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Now, there's so much, so much in this. Victorious, first of all. Those who are victorious, those who are conquerors. What does that mean? Well, earlier in Revelation, we've been told they're those who've conquered the devil by the blood of Jesus, those who've conquered their sin by the blood of Jesus, those who've conquered their fears by the blood of Jesus. And it, has, uh, it is a, uh, a description of Christians that we are conquerors. We don't often feel like that. Uh, it's a language that sometimes might be used and people think of a strong person, but that's not what's being referred to here. So in chapter 11 of Hebrews, <coughs> <we're, coughs> sorry, excuse me, we read verse, in verses 9 and 10 about Abraham. He was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Abraham, so the inheritance is the land. And the Jewish people were in, promised the inheritance of the land. And Abraham was looking forward to a city. And that's what we're told. We're going to inherit this land. We're going to inherit this city. Now, we live, the reality is that we live in a world where there is oppression and sin. We know that Christ has won the battle, but we know that the war is not yet ended. Every believer has to daily fight against sin and the devil and the world. And yet, there is that promise of eternal life for all God's people and we inherit all the good things that are coming the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming not the realities themselves <clears throat> as C.S. Lewis puts it we live in the shadowlands and I love what is uh, it said in Romans 4 13 it was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that we, he would be heir of the world but through the righteousness that comes by faith or verse 16, therefore the promise comes by faith, so it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. Now, I love that. We have a vast inheritance. Imagine just now that you were living in relative poverty, but you knew you had an inheritance, I don't know, let's say up in the the highlands of Scotland, the county of Sutherland, and you were heir to the, the Duke or the Duchess of Sutherland, and you're going to get that marvellous car castle, um, Dunrobin, and you're going to get, is it Carbisdale? You're going to get, I mean, you, you just, you've got, you've got this vast wealth and land and everything else waiting for you. Well, that's what it's like for the Christian. Wherever we are, whatever circumstances we may be in, we're looking forward to receiving an inheritance which is described as the world. Wasn't it interesting when Jesus said, what does it profit a man if you gain the whole world but lose his soul? And when we give ourselves to Christ, that's the amazing thing. We also gain the whole world. I think it was Abraham Kuyper who said of Jesus that he, there wasn't one inch in the whole world of which Christ does not say, this is mine. But because we are co-heirs with Christ, as Romans 8, Romans 8 points out, we can also say, this is ours. This is ours. All right, folks. Um, it's a wonderful thought, isn't it? That inheritance we've got. This is Monday, and so tomorrow will be Tuesday, and we shall, God willing, see you then. Bye.